Hello. We're at the Roseland Ballroom for the first annual New York City Tattoo Convention. Hey, Bruce. Uh, hey, don't. Hey, can I interview you for a sure. second? How you doing? All right. Where you been, man? Uh, I'm in prison. Really? Let's talk about your tattoos. That's what we're here for. You got a favorite tattoo? Uh, my back. You ever wake up in the morning and just look down at yourself and you forget you had all these tattoos? And you go like, ah! Nah, I just regret this one right here because it stands up on a collar when I wear a shirt and a tie. Oh, really? Yeah. You can get it removed though. $1,500 a square inch? Forget about it. It's not worth it. It's part of your image anyway. What image is that? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. I don't have a bad image. I'm a good guy. So what made you want to get tattoos legalized in New York City? Well, it was one of the, it was basically a no-brainer. I mean, it was ridiculous that they weren't legalized, and I actually didn't know that they weren't. So when I found out from a reporter that they weren't, I said, let me check into it, and if they're really not legal, I'll legalize them. Mm -hmm. And I did. this was an industry, very active industry. The best thing to do is legalize it, regulate it. The tattoo artists then don't have to feel that somehow they have to be underground. Mm -hmm. People who want tattoos can feel that, can be confident that the procedures are safe. So you said you were thinking about getting a tattoo? Have any designs in mind? Eh. <laughs> Not quite sure yet? Maybe I'll do one of those Millennium Snakes. But oh, yeah. The serpent eating its tail is easy. Mm -hmm. You know, Midgard Serpent, Eternity, Rings, all those good things. What's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Clayton Patterson. I'm from New York City, the Lower East Side, and I'm the uh, production coordinator for the uh, tattoo uh, convention in New York City. Tell us a little bit about putting this thing together. Well, this was a very uh, interesting project to put together because uh, Steve Bonji, uh, one of the uh, people putting this together, Westwood and myself, we uh, really were instrumental in legalizing tattooing in New York City. So the three of us worked very hard to, uh, to make this happen and uh, one of the benefits of that was having the first international tattoo convention in New York City, which is really a wonderful and great thing because modern ta uh, tattooing really got a big advance out of New York City because Samuel Riley invented and patented the first electronic tattoo machine. So that's what made all of this possible. So New York has always been important to uh, the history of tattooing in both America and the world. Okay, and you have a tattoo? Yeah. Where do you have it? On my arm. Let me see it. Turn it over. Are you proud of it? Yeah, I am. Very Did it cost proud. you a lot of money? Yeah, it costs a whole bunch. Did you save up a lot? Did you work hard on a job to get it? Yeah, you could say. And do you think it expresses who you are? Slightly. I see you have a few tattoos on your legs. Would you like to discuss some of the meanings or some of the uh, stories you have behind them? Actually, what some people do, they, they get a tattoo off the board. They say, oh, wow, that looks great. Let me get that skull with the bleeding heart and all that shit. And um, they... Uh, they get it off the board. How many more of thousands of people would get the same thing? So me, I got a few pieces that I bring in. I collect comic books and whatnot. Tattoos and people who get them, they, they're individuals. It's like an individual art. The way a lot of talk shows, a lot of people say that tattoo, people who get tattoos are either drug addicts, they're, they're outlaw bikers, they're delinquents, they're degenerates of society. It's all BS. I mean, what are they? I mean, I mean, I know average working class people that work on Wall Street that have tattoos on their back. I mean, for my sleeve work, it's never going to go up above this line because whatever job I'm going to have, the corporate sleeve is always going to be that short, you know, on short, short sleeve shirts. So some people, they get tattooed here, they get tattooed here, and then their employer looks at them there when it comes summertime when everybody's wearing short sleeve shirts and you're still wearing long sleeve. A lot of people look at you bad because, oh, you, you come from the rough side of the tracks because you have a tattoo. It's all BS. The way he's doing it, it doesn't look like the guy is in any pain at all, but you can see the needle from the, the rod he's using. Right. It, it just, like, pulls the skin with it. What kind of style do you use?
choice in your in to do tattooing? Horitoshi. 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 Yes. Is there any way you can describe what he does? Uh, it's more, I guess, traditional Japanese methods right. of tattooing. It's it's really more pleasant than than just the actual using the machine. It's more comfortable. It's, it's not as pulsating the, the feeling itself. So. Right. As right. with uh, a machine. Yeah. How long have you been uh, prepared? Have you prepared yourself mentally for getting this tattoo? Oh no, it's a spare of the moment. Spare I mean, of the moment. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. My name is Fred Smith III, and I'm a tattoo artist. What's your name? What do you do? I'm Cindy Smith, and I'm his wife. Uh -huh. You don't want to know what I do. Uh -huh. So, what's your background? Um, everything: mechanic, skateboarding, tattooing. When's your first one? I was 15. Right after my dad died. I said, I'm ready. You got a favorite tattoo? Nah, I just like tattoos. Well, at first, my mom was pretty cool. You know, I was 15 when I started, and I started getting a lot at 15. After the first two or three, she was like, that's cool, whatever. And then after that, it was, what's wrong with you? Wait, your next one, why don't you get stupid on your forehead? But now mom's getting tattooed. But now my mom is actually getting tattooed. President of the so. Lions Club getting tattooed. Amazing. So things happen, you know what I mean? Is that your influence? Uh, oh, yeah, she makes you know. me sign everyone. Oh, you're, you're tattooing your mom? Oh, of yeah. course. Wow. Like <laughs> That's definitely unusual. That is, so. What was your first tattoo? On my skull and cross and look my neck. First one, 14 years old. Lad, everything, get it. This is my favorite one. My Fred Smith before. Got that breastfeeding. He's done a skateboard too. And tattoo. And, and he's done a tattoo already. He's only old. three. And so like if the Guinness Book of World Records is out there. He did a tattoo. How'd it come out? And it looks like a skull. He did a little, it, he people skulls. are shocked. I should, we should have videotaped it. But I wasn't at home because I probably wouldn't have allowed it anyways until I saw how good it was. And how it we took extra precautions for sanitary reasons. Wait, who did he Sterile. tattoo? His, we call Actually, him Grandpa Sid from Water Brothers. And he's 47 and years old. Pretty Sid cool. of Ruzi. And 20. people are in line for Baby Fred, actually. Yeah. One more tattoo Fred. Yeah, I want a tattoo from a three-year-old kid. Here, come on, on, on. We got a bed and breakfast. It can't be bad, you tattoo know what I mean? Bed and you have any uh, favorite tattoos? I have many favorite tattoos of mine or someone else's. Oh, on you? On me, yeah. Can you show us one? This is the most recent one. Hmm. And right now I'm. What is this? What are we looking at? It's a Nepali version of the goddess Kali from India. Mm -hmm. My back is done, my lower leg is done, uh -huh. this arm is partially done. Mm -hmm. So, Pretty cool. This are, you, one. are you thinking about going for full coverage? Uh, I got a ways to go. What's your name? Tom Hammond from Rumford, Maine. And what's your first tattoo? This rose on my upper arm. And did it sort of take off from there? Yeah. I joined the Air Force and found a lot of tattoo pilots. Uh-huh. So kept going. Uh-huh. And how long ago was that? 18 years I started. How often do you get a tattoo? Once a week. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's Since great. For a year and a half now. Um, and you've got a guy who, uh, who does most of your tattoos? Yes, he's right here. Okay. Let's uh, bring him over. My name is Adam Mazza from Dixfield, Maine. And uh, you did a lot of these tattoos we see over here on Tom. Yeah, it was uh, face and hands and a lot of other stuff, a lot of other larger stuff. When did you start tattooing? Probably about three years ago. Mm -hmm. Had you tattooed anyone's face before? No, just Tom's. Is there any sp special precautions you need to keep in mind when you're doing that? Uh, you, you just can't go real deep. You got to be real careful about angles and uh, the skin can get uh, torn up quickly if you're a little uh -huh. too heavy on it, you know, so uh -huh. you gotta take it real easy on something like that. I say what Tom's doing with, with his whole, you know, the whole facial angle and having it totally visible to the public at all times, I mean, that's, that's bringing it in a new way. That's forcing people to accept it. What are your tattoos, do you think, what do they say about you? Say I'm pretty freaky, probably. Are you in general? Like, even if there was no such thing as tattooing, you think you'd still be kind of a freaky guy? Not at all. No. I'm the most normal person ever. 
Hi. 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 What's your name? Mark Senna. What's your name? Mary Lynn Blazer. And are you guys tattoo artists? No, we're not. What do you guys do? We're going to be helping the tattoo artists buy insurance in case they get sued by someone who is hurt while they're working on them or claims that they're hurt. How common is it for a tattoo artist or a piercer to get sued? We do find, we do have some insurance for people who do permanent makeup, which is a form of tattooing, obviously. There's going to be a need for it even more so, we think, now because more mainstream America is becoming tattooed. Do you have any tattoos? Well, I have one. <laughs> Not a real one. These are temporary tattoos that are done with like an airbrush. Uh -huh. And basically, I can actually show you what I'm doing. Um, give me your arm. Stick your arm right here. We use a, these are like, these are specially formulated ink that uh, they use for, uh, they use actually all these, these for all the movies and things like that. Right. So yeah, definitely. I'm pretty happy with that myself. Cool. What's your name and where are you from? John the Tattooer from Slovenia. You came to New York for the convention? That's right. How many tattoos have you done since you're here? That's the first one. How do you know John over here? So I was work on Friday and really liked it, to be honest with you. Is this a style you specialize in? Uh, not at all. It's actually uh, just a tribal piece. I'm not a specialist, tribal specialist. I do mostly uh, mostly fantasy art. What do you do? I'm a manager of a pizza hut. <laughs> do you have any pizza related tattoos? No. How long have you been tattooing? Uh, I don't remember. What's your name? My name is Hans Hersman. And where are you from? From, uh, from the Netherlands, Europe. And uh, do you have a favorite tattoo? Uh, yes, this one, the, the car on my left thigh. Why do you like it? It is not my most recent tattoo, but it is one I picked out myself and I made a composition of two different things. So. The little man is from one tattoo and the rest is from another one and I made myself a kind of compilation and there it is. My first tattoos have been done uh, about 20 years ago in, in 1980 and they were done by the famous Sebastian from London and then everything started with things in the Japanese style so I, I stick to that style. I, that's why everything is in that special way. Um, do you think that tattooing is a fad or, or, or uh -huh. a, you know, like a momentary thing? Or do you think it's something that, that is a part of a generation? I think it is a part of a generation, but 100 years ago there was another generation. And I think during the times of the Egyptians there was another generation. So I think it is of all times. Future plans for your uh, tattoos? Yes. Uh, there. My tattooist is busy finishing this thing and this thing will go on and continue to my dick. What was your prize that you won today? Uh, third prize for um, best tribal. Best tribal? Yeah, for my back. When did you and decide to compete? When? Yes. Oh, like an hour before I did. Yeah, it was very spontaneous. So It's fun well, though. How long do you spend preparing for a tattoo? Uh, like the whole idea, what I'm, what I'm gonna get. Sometimes, like years. Sometimes it's like I know right away. You know, you get that feeling. Uh -huh. So, which one took the longest to decide? Um, my back. I spent like two years planning my back piece. It's like the most incredible journey once you like cover that much area. You know, it's like a big trip. It's crazy. Do you feel tired from the journey ever? No way. No, no burden way. Of, of what you have. Absolutely not. I want more. <laughs> like I can't get enough, you know? I love it. I love it. First place. Best overall tattoo. Hi there. What's your name? Isabel. And where are you from? I'm from England. Hey, I think you're in the Guinness Book of World Records, aren't you? I hope so, next year. <laughs> what for? <laughs> a full bodysuit everywhere. Except my face and my hands and my neck. <laughs> and uh, what's your most recent tattoo? Uh, I'm having my top recolored. 
So here, just healing, mm -hmm. just down there. And that one's new in there. And that one there is new. So um, next time I go, I will have another piece put in the back there across the back so I would get maybe some sort of animal across there what made you start getting tattoos I went to a tattoo convention and saw something I liked and that set me off and I had two at the same time and I went two or three months then I went and got some more across the top of the bust and and I changed to a different artist and he started doing more work along the top and he said you can't have too many ones all over you must start joining up and make it look as if it follows on and that's what happened I started at the top and worked down all the way down and is it all pretty much uh, what, what would you call the theme of your uh, tattoos wildlife animals Wild animals yeah and flowers mm -hmm. Um, erotic things. Where do you go from here? <sighs> yeah, that's the problem. Uh, maybe, uh, if things fade, I would just sort of get them recolored. Uh, I might eventually do my hands. Sort of a renewal like spring. Yeah, because I get a buzz if I don't go. I feel I must get some more tattoos soon. You're hooked. <laughs> I'm really hooked, yeah. Yeah. Tell us about your piercing. 4-0, 40. 40 of them. I intend to have some more oh, really? down there. Yeah. <laughs> Nine there, two there, two there, uh, 13 there, 13 there, 40, yeah. <laughs> Isabel's got about 40 penises tattooed on her and it seems to be a thing you like, doesn't it? Is it? Yeah. I think it's 40, isn't it? There's, I don't know, there's, yeah, there's some around the back there, isn't there? There's a monkey <laughs> masturbating another monkey. There's two devils having sex, there's penises here. Penises everywhere. Well, well my name is Paul Sace and I'm the Vice President of the Tattoo Club of Great Britain. But I'd just like to point out that in Britain that you cannot be pierced for sexual pleasure. You can only be pierced for decorative reasons. And if it does stimulate sex, you can be prosecuted for it. But you can only have it for, to be looked at. It's, it's, quite a, it's quite a bizarre thing because many people get pierced because it stimulates the sexual act. But in England, if they find out about that, you can be arrested. Hmm. But that's just our weird, wacky laws, you know? <laughs> I never got my genitals pierced. I would not do that, man. Why not? It's just something, you know, you just keep clean, you know? Uh, you don't stop poking things in. The only thing I put, I poke it into something. Not, you know, I don't get things poked into it, you know? I heard stories that girls could just rub their legs together, you know? This girl told me she could rub her legs together at a dinner table, eating dinner with her parents, and, you know, almost have an orgasm, you know? That's cool, you know? When I got my first tattoo, it was fun, it didn't hurt, you know, because I guess it's on like a stronger part of my body. I work with uh, Hanky Panky in Amsterdam, it's uh, in the red light district, and my name is Captain Caveman. What I really like is like the tribal tattoos. It's got to be nice and clear symbols for people to see what you're about. If you throw a nice cat on your chest, nobody's going to see who you are. If you got a big axe with a couple of dots, they see which tribe you're from and they know to shake your hand or to throw a spare in your chest. And you decided to get a tattoo here? Yes, I decided to get a tattoo. How it's long did you think about this tattoo before you got it? Well, it's something that was always in the back of my head that I, I wanted to get a tattoo, just a small tattoo. Um, but to find the right tattoo, I think, takes time because it has, you're with it, it's with you for the rest of your life. It's funny because I think whenever we have something in the back of our minds, like, God, I wish I, I wish I, I kind of want to, but, and you always have it, it keeps coming up, popping up periodically through your life, and, and those are the things I think that you need to do, you know, because they're obviously little things that are telling you, and especially when they keep popping up as you're growing older and older. What is your I occupation? hate having regrets about things. What's that? What is your occupation? I'm actually an actress. You're an actress? Yeah. So, what do you guys think?
guys think of the show? Well, we think an awful lot of it. I, yeah? I, where are you from? We're, we drove from Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, really? Atlanta! Yeah, yeah, Atlanta. it's great. It's great. How did you get into tattooing? Like, that's a pretty strong statement you have on your back. And where did you get it? I got it uh, in Suffern, New York by an artist named Larry Davis. And um, I've always liked the art of tattooing. It's always been fascinating to me, you know, the, the, the permanency of it. And the quote itself means a lot to me personally. And the, the, the quote just represents all the struggles I've had in my life and never to quit and never, you know, to keep fighting and to succeed no matter how much the odds are stacked against you. And until you die, you just keep at it. And so I wanted to convey that. And by putting it small somewhere in my body, it wouldn't have the same impact. I, it, I wanted it to have the impact physically on me as it feels in my heart. So it means that much to me. So I, I think that's what tattooing is all about. That's exactly what it's all about. Exactly, yeah. I'm here with... Linda. And you are... Frank Osnato. Uh, you're, you're, you're a married couple. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. We're from Hillside. And did tattooing bring you together? Yes, it did. Actually, yeah. It did? Yeah. He, we worked at the same place, and he came up to me, and he started talking to me. And I actually didn't think much of him, and then he pulled up his shirt, and he showed me his, this tattoo right here, and I'm like, oh. I guess he has potential. <laughs> so what was your mental thought when you were getting that tattoo? Uh, this one was a memory of my friend Tony that passed away. We were into Zeppelin. Do you find yourself associating with other people that have tattoos? Well, most of the crowd that like you know we uh, see day in and day out don't really have many. You know, we're Not we're we're like the freaks of the crowds yeah. because we have all the tattoos and shit. You know, so we don't really. You know, it's only when we come to like conventions and uh, when we go to biker swap meets and shit like that that. Uh, you know, we see people that we can relate to. So, tattooing is... It's, it's a, a way, way of life, yeah. really. Indeed. Yeah, because yeah. we go by, you know, like you get the semblance, like people say, what do you get tattoos for? You know, I'm a fireman. So I got, you know, I got the Taz with the saw. He's cutting the, my leg open with the dragon coming out. Plus he's got all this I got my shit here. Yeah, so it's like a way of life, you know. Like people say, I'm like, I do this, yeah, from, do this for a living. Some people, like, go to movies and dinners and shit like that, you know. This is, we don't go to bars and hang out. We we do like biker swap meets. We do biker swap meets. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. tattoo conventions and shit like that, you know? That's, it's like just- We were just saying, this is the first one. They're like, now next year we're gonna get babies and we're gonna come for the whole weekend, you know? Like, it's cool, you know? You're hanging all weekend. You feel like you're at home with everybody. Not like you go like, oh man, look at him, look at it, you know? It's exactly. like, like we go down to Jersey Shore and walk down a boardwalk and you hear people go, oh, look at that oh, guy. But yeah. then we see somebody with ink, we're like, yo, let's pull, dude, you know. But like you said, it's a way of life. Well, that's yeah. why when people say, you know, about getting tattoos, I always say to them, get what you really want. Yeah. Like the one guy I work with, he just got a nice, uh, um, God's, uh, not Godzilla, like Gorilla. And I told him, see, did you want it? He said, that's what I want. And he got it. He said, yeah, that was perfect. See, and I, you know, you say, yeah, that's the way it goes. It's a lifetime commitment. That's it. It's more commitment than marriage. Yeah. Wow, I like that. He yeah. can go. Tattoos are yeah. going to stay. You know what yeah. I mean? Not you know, that he's you, going anywhere. You, you got it. You know. <laughs> wise guy. But we're, you know, that's, you know, that's how we hang together. You yeah. know, it, it's like, I, a lot of girls I went out when I was younger, yeah, tattoo, because I had them since I was 17. Like you said, then you run into a girl like this, and she likes me for them. You know, that's what you're looking for the rest of your life. You know, people to hang with, they like you for what you are, you know?